Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Friday, December 8th, 4.37 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we're in an uptrend since the O'Neill follow-through days on 11.1 and 11.2. These follow-through day signal working magnificently. Uh, you can see over here on the trend gauge, we've got leadership with the green arrow. And for the first time in quite a long time, all five of the major indexes trending above their uh, three time frames, short-term 21-day exponential moving average, medium-term 50-day moving average, long-term 200-day moving average. The last holdout was small caps. We wanted to see a weekly close above there, and we got it. So four green arrows there. What happened today, a little bit of a change up by the market, or I should say the reaction to the market as we've been on a bad news is good news bent to the market, meaning uh, signs of a slowing economy have been greeted with uh, higher prices under the assumption that that was going to keep the Fed from raising interest rates and in fact start pricing in interest rate cuts, which we've, uh, which are now greater than a 50% chance of that happening by the March FOMC meeting and basically no chance of an interest rate increase next Wednesday at the FOMC, although we also have CPI and PPI next week uh, to battle. But what happened today was the NFP report, this is the government jobs report, non-farm payrolls came out and more jobs were added than were estimated. And the initial knee-jerk reaction was down hard, about a half of a percent on the S&P, eight-tenths of a percent on the NASDAQ. But a funny thing happened on the way to doomsday. We slowly started to recover into the open uh, gave it back a little bit, opened down between about a quarter percent, a little less than a quarter percent. And uh, that was the low. Within five minutes, we started to rally, strong rally. Uh, 10 o'clock came around, consumer confidence data came out that increased the strength of the rally. We made highs of the day, challenging the recent 4607 level. Three pullbacks after that could not, uh, we pulled all the way back to flat, but uh, held the recent uh, breakout level, that key 43, 4570 level. And we had a strong afternoon move. Here are the final numbers. The term I'm starting to hear thrown around is Goldilocks in the financial media. This was uh, something quite, quite a few years ago that was constantly thrown around and it deals, it's a reference to the economy being not too hot, not too cool, but just right. And uh, this was the first instance, like I said, of good news being treated as good news because now uh, the market seems to have shifted to avoiding a recession as opposed to being concerned about inflation. Here are the final numbers, the big seven. Uh, six of the seven up, an average of 0.69%. The RG8, uh, let's see, were all of them higher? All of them were higher, up and up an average of 0.78%. This is our eight growth ETF composite. We're going to look at those charts today. S&P 500 uh, closed within five points of the high of the day. That's a 52-week high and a recovery high on the rally, up four-tenths of a percent, equal weighted up three-tenths. NASDAQ 100 up 0.45%. Uh, six of the big seven up, only Google lower, equal weighted up by two tenths. Dow up 0 0.36, mid caps up 0 0.44, Russell 2000 small caps up 0 0.67, global diversified 6040 stock bond just barely positive as yields did tick up today, meaning prices lower. Uh, so basically a flat line on that, in-house protection, a nice day led by some leading names up 0.95%. Let's get to some charts, then the tail of the tape, and uh, we'll kick off the weekend. We'll start here with the S&P 500. You can see it's closing above this 4,600 level. Let's go to our trusty old 30-minute chart where we've been drawing lines incessantly on here. This is the line that 4,568 to 70 that we failed to get above of one, two, three, four times, then finally on Thursday got above it, back tested it, and held back tested it at the open today and it held back tested it midday and it held and closing at the highs 
Uh, this is kind of confirming the breakout. Doesn't say for a hundred percent, of course, nothing. There are no absolutes in the market, but my expectation is this 4570-ish level should hold now. And if it does not, that would be a change in character in the market. So uh, this is looking like a breakout now, finally. And our day count goes from a consolidation to two days up, as we've survived that uh, 4568, 4570-ish level. Uh, for two days now. We'll see what next week brings. As, as I mentioned, there are a lot of uh, CPI, PPI, and the FOMC next week. So we're always fighting something in the market, but it was good to have a positive reaction to good news. Here's the NASDAQ 100 after bouncing off of the 21-day moving average on Monday. We'll bring up its 30-minute chart. Not quite a breakout, but right there near the top of the range just these uh, two wicks above it, two false breakouts above 392. Uh, we got above 392 early in the day, came back and tested it, got back above it late in the day. So we'll be referencing that area next week, uh, but good to see participation there and very clear an uptrend line making higher highs and higher lows uh, all week. So good stuff there. Let's go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. On the daily chart, six closes now above the 36,000 level. Uh, not showing relative strength, but we don't need to. We got our relative strength the two weeks prior to that while the uh, broader market and tech stocks were correcting. So saw the relative strength there. And uh, I mean, look where the relative strength line is on the Dow Jones Industrial Average over here back in January. It's way above uh, where it currently is now, even though price is well above where it was then. So uh, relative strength, obviously not confirming the price, but uh, not a problem above 36,000 on the Dow. Let's go to mid caps. Uh, nice close today, up a little less than a half of a percent. I want to see if we can continue riding the 8 EMA higher and break above the highs of this week. That's what we'll be looking for next week. And happy, happy joy, joy. Now it's to, uh, IWM small caps closing right near the highs for the week, not eclipsing the uh, quick move high up on Wednesday, but hey, we'll take this. We pulled back yesterday, held the 8 EMA, and uh, nice day today, up 0.76%. Even when the market was pulling back today, I, I do want to show this because these were some pretty severe pullbacks intraday. Uh, so here's the gap down, the immediate move up. You think you're off to the races, right? Never. One wave down, two waves down, three waves down, put in a bottom, the bottom at 45, 78-ish, uh, and then boom, here's the uh, ignition to the upside. Strong rally the last four hours uh, of the day, getting to new recovery highs. Uh, while we were doing that pullback, the VIX stayed negative on the day uh, and closed at the lows of the day, making new lows, 1235 down 5.4%. The bears just cannot believe what's going on here. UUP, the dollar up slightly on the day, uh, and that impacted one of the few weak spots, uh, which was gold, silver, and gold and silver stocks. We stopped out of our nugget for a small gain today. Uh, here's what the impact was on gold. Uh, very clear failed breakout now. Five days of weakness, down 1.3%. Gold stocks, GDX, even worse, down 2.1, down five straight days. Uh, and SLV, uh, down 3.2%. Um, we're not gold bugs here. When gold's working, we'll play it. If it's not, we won't. Uh, it was. We saw a failed breakout there. We watched our nice gains go down to a small gain, and we finally pulled the plug on that today when we made a lower low. Let's flip to Bitcoin, which continues to look really strong, up 2.84% on the day, making higher uh, highs off the bottom. Flip into bonds now, BND, bond prices down across the board. Uh, after a, a little bit of a breakout to higher highs earlier in the week, down 0.48%, but the rising yields did not impact stocks today. There's BND, here's the TLT down 0.82%. TYX, this is the 30 year yield popping up 1.86% and the 10 year up 2.81%, big move there. Let's go to the tail of the tape. You can pause this here, uh, day count up to second day above the eight EMA. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> and 26 day above the 21 day exponential moving average. Here are the non-farm payroll numbers, 199,000 jobs versus 180K expected and average hourly earnings was above expectations. Those are really two pieces of, uh, well, this is a piece of good news. This is kind of inflationary having average hourly earnings higher than expectations, but uh, that consumer confidence number coming in at 10 o'clock uh, spiked the market after uh, it was already recovering. And then we survived the three waves down intraday pullback to close at the high. So good stuff there. Uh, Bitcoin, regional banks, oils, semiconductors, str strong on the weak on the weakness today, interesting. Lee was uh, some defensive sectors, XLP, XLU, and XLRE were all negative. XLV, barely positive by the end of the day, so we'll give that yellow, even though it underperformed. Uh, retail week, biotech week. Uh, In-house, the portfolio. Uh, coin, leading stock, we felt fortunate to get it off the 8, ENA, 8 EMA yesterday. It acted great today. We added to that. 1.90 is our uh, adjusted beta, not 1.81. We added to that, we added to SSO when it recovered uh, intraday and held that uh, 45 key 4570 level on the pullback. We bought AMD on a pullback after a great day yesterday. We bought CCJ back off the 21 EMA and sold three underperformers, DraftKings, PDD, and Nugget. Uh, we'll take a look at these charts uh, in a moment, but the bottom line is Goldilocks, broad rally S&P, NASDAQ, new rally high, leader strong, great way to close the week, and we'll see what next week brings. So let's very quickly go through uh, the, the end of the day charts. I always review these. The RG, we're going to do the uh, FANG 10 and then the RG8. I've had a couple of people asking what they were, but we'll go through them one more time. And this just confirms what we're seeing in strength on the market. So we're going to start out with the FANG 10. That's the big seven plus uh, three additional names. So we'll start off with Apple. After a perceived uh, really weak uh, earnings report, Apple's been on a tear, uh, breaking out of this cup and handle. Uh, Amazon bounced at the 21, recovered very nicely. Microsoft back above the 21. Meta back above the 21. NVIDIA, great stuff here, breaking a downtrend line. And uh, after failing to get above the 8 and the 21 EMA on Wednesday, closing nicely above it today. Tesla above the 21 and Google above the 21 despite uh, a weekday today. So all seven of the big seven above their 21 day exponential moving average, that's not bearish. Moving on, Netflix just barely below the 21. And then the other two, AMD, as I said, we took a starter in this today. Uh, big news out of that, um, I mentioned it in the video last night uh, about the target market for AI chips and uh, two great days uh, from AMD after we got stopped out. I don't, I don't worry about buying something back higher uh, in the face of a change in character or good news, and it can be a leading stock, so uh, that's just fine with me. Uh, and finally, Snow, which is consolidating nicely, putting in a handle right near the top of this base. So nine of the 10 uh, FANG Plus index stocks up today. Now the RG8, IWO, all these charts look good. They're making higher highs and higher lows. Uh, IWO, that's the Russell 2000 growth. SLYG is the Spider 600 uh, growth. MDYG is the mid-cap 400 growth, all riding the 21 and the ADMA higher. QQQJ, this is a mid-cap NASDAQ 100, looking good. Uh, Dorsey Wright, PDP at the top of a... Uh, near the pivot of a double bottom base. SPHB, big cap high beta making higher highs. Uh, FFTY, this is the IBD50, probably the weakest of them, but um, undercut and reclaiming the eight EMA today. And RK has just been on a tear riding the eight EMA higher. So that's the RG8 and the big seven and uh, plus the three. Let's take a look at the, some portfolio names now. In fact, this is going to be the entire portfolio from uh lowest to biggest by position amd we added to that today ccj uh we sold this slightly higher 
but uh, pull and then since then it pulled back, bounced off the eight, uh, off the 21 day exponential moving average, and looks like it might be making a, a, a run, ready to make a run as it's going sideways, consolidating for a while. Uh, the thesis is still intact, so a good low risk entry for this. Great numbers for 23 and 24. Great growth numbers, I should say. So DraftKings, we sold this today on its recovery. Uh, stopped at, by the declining 21-day exponential moving average. Uh, basically, it's pulling a weed. We took a shot at it, didn't work, didn't make a higher high today. Uh, volume had, pop patterns have turned negative. Uh, we just moved on. Next up, IoT. We're underwater since slightly since we bought this, but it bounced at the 8 EMA today, consolidating nicely after its earnings gap higher. Coin, Pyramid added to this today, extreme strength, bought it off the 8 EMA yesterday, up 7.66% today. This is uh, moving up higher with Bitcoin, uh, looking fantastic, very clearly a market leader. Uh, ESTC faded a little bit in the afternoon, but made a higher high today. That looks great. Higher high since its earnings gap up. Great volume patterns too, up 2.3% on the day. GTLB had a great recovery, gap down on the day, closed at the highs of the day. Uh, another gap out of a nice base on earnings and consolidating uh, afterwards. In the video, we already showed that. Uh, snow. Looking to add to this as it puts in a handle, if you can break out of this cup and handle. Uh, PDD for a long time held that 140 level. Uh, didn't hold it yesterday below the 8 EMA today. Uh, relative strength waning. Not really a surprise it's not broken, but we want to, I mean, if it reclaims the 140 level with volume, uh, we'll be back in it. Uh, but after volume drying up here the prior three days, the expectation was that it was going to bounce off the eight and go higher. It didn't. It gapped down. Uh, we took a 2% loss on it. Uh, CrowdStrike, largest individual stock position, continues to just act like an absolute beast. Uh, after a nice run, an earnings gap up and continuing higher, riding that eight EMA higher. So... Uh, Three names that we sold today. I talked about two of them. We've got nine individual stocks in the portfolio plus uh, a few ETFs. The ETFs are Nail and BITO. Uh, the third one was Nugget, and we sold that today uh, with the break below the 21 on GDX. We already showed that chart. Uh, and then uh, here's Nail, ITB. We took some, strength, uh, some profits on strength in this today. It's made higher highs since then. Uh, I'm okay with that. It is extremely extended. We'll just ride this uh, remaining half position higher. And um, that's it. The rest are, well, we've got that FNG, uh, FNGS. That's the big FANG index, the big 10. We own it via FNGU. I'll show that chart. First of all, I'll show the underlying, which is what we make our decisions based on. This is 10 big tech stocks equally weighted at 10%. That's FNGS. Here's FNGU. This thing really moves when these stocks uh, are higher, are uh, cranking, and you can see the uh, cup and handle formation that that's being put in. Then we own uh, equal weighted ETS for the S&P, uh, leverage ETS for the S&P, and leverage ETF for small caps. Uh, that gives us our adjusted beta at 1.9 or 90% higher than the overall market. Uh, that's typical of a gross stock investing. And that is going to wrap it. Well, yes, that is going to wrap it. As always, like to hear from me. You can email me, Donna at VeraAsset.com. If you're interested in becoming a client, my Dan, my partner's Dan Stewart. He's at Dan at RevereAsset.com, or the phone is 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. Remember, it's not how much you make in the market, it's how much of that you can keep. We're in making it mode right now with a healthy market wind at our back. We'll continue to take advantage of whatever opportunities are presented our way, always with stops in place if the market reverses itself. And with that, I'll wrap up the video for the week ending December 8th, 2023. This is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset Management. Thanks for listening and have a great weekend.